All right, guys, so we are going to walk you through the first couple turns in Colosseum of the Gods. I have Ruby Darling and jo Robo Joe here. Stick your hand up for the There you go. go. They're going to help us out and play through a, the first couple of rounds. Going ahead and shuffling the arena deck here. Nice and easy piece to get us going. The game starts. Each of us have six tokens or represent six die. That's going to be your hit points, you know, how much health you have before you die in a game. The game then starts with... Each player being given five cards. If you notice, we're all playing off of the same deck. Please note this is a uh, demo version of the deck. They hope they won't be uh, so off center when you actually get them in the real world. That is five for each player. Now, we have a fun little way of showing how you get to see who goes first. We actually reveal one card for each player. That's for Ruby. Aww. That's for Joe. This is for me. Each card has a value, as you see right here. I got a four, a one, and a three, so I'm going to be going first. Now we also reveal three more cards because that's how many players we have. All the weapons revealed stay in play in what's called the armory. On your turn, you get to draw one card. If you don't want to draw that card, you can instead choose one of these cards to put into your hand. It kind of lets the game get started off with a bang by having things directly in there that you can go ahead and fight for. Since I went ahead and won the draw, I'm going to go ahead and go first. On my turn, I'm going to choose to, instead of drawing, I'm going to take the broadsword, which I, as my one card I play per turn, will play in front of me. Now, I get to play one card, and I also get to attack an opponent. The way you attack an opponent is by discarding any of the cards from my hand and choosing who I choose to attack. The player that I choose to attack is Joe. I discard a card from my hand. This card I'm discarding, wrong place, as a value of two. I also have one weapon in play, which has a silver triangle. Silver triangle represents an attack bonus. So I have an attack value of three. He can now discard any number of cards up to, the, up to or more than the value. If he does not beat the value, he takes damage of the difference. Or Example. I could play a card like Trip Snare. He's playing a tactic card. As you can see, tactic cards are usually traps, things that we play on other players' turns to go ahead and uh, stave off some of the nastier effects. This one cancels the attack, so that attack doesn't go through, the card is still discarded, and I either have to discard two cards, or I do not play cards or, or attack next turn. I'm going to choose to keep my cards and go ahead and just stay right there. Since I played a card and attacked, it is now Ruby's turn to go ahead and try out the game. Alright, well I'm going to take the spear, so that Joe can't have it. Alright, um, I'm going to put down the trident as my weapon, so I'm playing this card, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna attack you with this cask of wine. <laughs> so she's attacking for two because of the value of the cask of wine, and that's one additional because of the silver triangle on her weapon card. Silver triangle. Joe discards a card with a value of four. Four is greater than three, so he does not take any damage. He does, however, have one less card in his hand to choose from. And that's the end of Ruby's turn. I'm going to play Weapon of Choice. Ooh! This allows me to search the deck for a weapon. Pretty self-explanatory. Put it right into play. That's a pretty nice little tactic there. The bow. One of the rarer and more dangerous weapons in the game. The bow has a very special text. <laughs> when someone attacks you, you get to attack them back first. When that happens, if you actually damage the opponent, the, the attack is cancelled. In fact, you might even be able to knock them out of the game before they're even able to land the blow, which gives you the power of the ranged attack. Luckily, it is a little balanced in that it does discard itself once it's used, so he only gets to pull that trick on one of us. Alright, and then Chan attacked me, so I'm going to attack you for five. Alright, I'm, I'm going to discard one card, two cards, one with a value of four, one with a value of one, to match your five. So I am not attacked. On to my turn, I draw a card. I'm not able to play a card or draw a card this, or play a card or attack this turn, so it is on to Ruby. Draw a card. 
All right, uh, I do not like you having that bow, so for my card to play this turn, I'm going to play the Wrath of Ares. Choose any card and play. Remove that card from the game permanently. Ah, uh, the reason it's important to remove it permanently is that the deck reshuffles. In case you have up to play or playing eight people, you might notice this deck can go pretty quickly. If this keeps more powerful cards from coming up and being a problem over and over and over again. So I will swing on Joe for two, one plus my one from the trident. <laughs> so, since she attacked for two, he took takes two damage. He's at four hit points. Yay! I'm, that's your turn. I'm for my turn. I'm going to play Aphrodite's Distraction. Choose up to three players. Well, there are only three of us, so you two. Those players may discard three cards. If they do not, they cannot attack or play cards during their next turn. Well, I'm going to not attack or play cards next turn. I'm going to not attack or play cards next turn because I don't want to discard my whole hand. Yep, and so then it's your turn. You get to attack. I'm good. I'm going to draw my card and do nothing else. I'm going to draw my card and do nothing else. Going to draw my card. And I'm going to Bloodbath. You attack. Bloodbath is a Colosseum card. Colosseum cards have extra, typically well, can affect everyone, but sometimes have extra special powers. This one is a power of six and allows him to attack two players simultaneously. So we are both having to defend against the strength six attack. And I'm going to play Cask of Wine as my play for the turn, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, both of you defend. I'm going to defend with Out of Sight, which if you were attacking me singularly would make you have to switch opponents, but even so, because it says it would cancel the attack, None yeah. for me, thanks! And I'm going to discard my six to match your six and take no damage. Ooh, well at least I got that six out of your hand. Yep. True story. Alright, on my turn, I draw a card. And I'm going to play Waking Nightmares, another Coliseum ah! card. <laughs> Coliseum cards affect almost usually affect every player, but will never affect the person who plays them. So this says each player discards a card at random. That means the two of you choose one card in your hand and discard it. Looks like there's only one here. Let me pick a card. I don't one. like this game. Oh, deal three damage to the player whose card has the highest value. Now this is a good point actually, because see, they both have a three, which means we just reveal cards from the top of the deck until they match. This one's for Ruby with a three. This one's for Joe with a four. Bam, you're hit with that, you're gonna take three damage. So since he has the, now the highest value, he takes three points of damage. He's down to one hit point. So now that Joe has no cards in hand and only one in play, I'm going to discard the wit with a value of two plus my one to attack Joe for three. I will forfeit my cask of wine to redirect the attack at Ruby over here. Yep, yeah, this is one of the weapons. Some of the weapons have extra powers. This one says you may forfeit this card. That means we're discarded from play, not from your hand. And you can choose another player and have me attack them instead. Essentially, they're paying me off in booze. Oh, uh, now I'm at four. So, shy attack, she ends up taking. Four oh, points damage. of damage from the attack and the broadsword's bonus. The broadsword's pretty good. Brilliant tactician, can't do simple math. Yep. The broadsword is a pretty powerful one. It's one of the few ones that has a low value that also has a pretty solid effect, but that should show you just how powerful some of the other weapons can be when this one's only a one and deals one damage no matter the outcome of combat. That's your turn, Brute. All right. Draw my card. Draw my card. Uh, I am going to play a gift, the Cloak of Vis Visibility. I draw two cards and I may not be attacked until my next turn. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> These are gift cards and they are very, very beneficial to players. On my turn, I draw a card and I'm going to do nothing. Say it's your turn. Well, drawing a card first is probably a good plan. Um, let's see. I am going to... You're at what, four now? I'm at four hit points. Woo! I'm gonna wildfire. Oof. I'm going to take two damage. I am going to use my trident. It says instead of attacking, I may choose to deal two damage to any player. That is you, Chan. Dead. And there's that. And that's just how you can see, that's how quickly a full round of Coliseum go with three players. Pretty quick to get through a round, and it can even go even faster, or just as fast with eight people. Because with eight players, once there's blood in the water, people go pretty quickly.